Hello, I wanted to make this video response to Mario, aka the Vigilant Christian. Not to talk down on Christians, but only because it's 2016 and I don't want people still believing that certain facts are false and to clear up some misconceptions about some of those facts. Hey everyone, it's TVC Mario, and you're here for a video that I wanted to make to compare Big Bang, the theory of evolution, and the origin of the universe, that ridiculous nonsense, versus intelligent design. You're already starting off pretty shaky. You've conflated the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution together, which are two completely different concepts. If either were somehow proven false, the other would remain true. But they both are a culmination of demonstrably true facts. So I'm very curious to see how you, a non-scientist, show them to be stupid. And what I want to show you here is that intelligent design is so much more rational, so much more logical, it doesn't even make sense. Well, what is your definition of rational and logical, Mario? Because the Big Bang and evolution theory are literal scientific facts, while intelligent design has been heavily debunked for over a hundred years. So you're right, it doesn't even make sense. And I cannot even believe that we live in a society here where this is even a debate. But then again, you know what, doesn't surprise me since the government makes sure to indoctrinate the kids with this false theory of evolution and they brainwash them to make them think that it's scientific fact when it's not. It's a fairy tale. My problem with this conspiracy claim is that in order for a conspiracy claim to work, there has to be something to gain or something to not lose by the conspirers. Nobody, I mean nobody, has anything to gain by teaching things that conflict with creationism. And you need more faith to believe in this theory than anything else. Well, when you look at the definition of the word faith, it is a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Now let's look at the term proof. Evidence or argument establishing or helping establish a fact or the truth of a statement. Now let's look at what a scientific theory is. A well-sustained explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. So you do not, in fact, need faith to believe in scientific theories. But you do, however, need faith to believe in intelligent design. A lot of it. Now what's important to recognize here is... What is science? Okay, so if people believe that evolution in the Big Bang is scientific fact, well, let's take an, a moment here and examine what science actually means by definition. I'll, I'll read it to you. The study of the natural world through, and get this, this is key, observation and experiment. Okay, so those of you out there who just blindly, foolishly believe that the Big Bang and the evolutionary theory is actual science? Well, who was there 13.8 billion years ago to observe and experiment on this so that we know it's scientific fact? No one was. No one could have been. Well, you have to realize that human senses are not the only means of scientific observation. Observation also consists of recording information using scientific tools and instruments through experiments. Now, not only can you physically see the beginning solar systems for, of the universe shortly after the Big Bang while looking through a powerful enough telescope, and not only can you physically see bacteria evolve through a powerful enough magnifying scope, but there are countless of other scientific ways to observe these theories. So therefore, it is not science. It is a theory, always will be a theory. It's impossible to prove scientifically because science by very definition is observable. So unless someone's observing it, always gonna be a theory. Still misrepresenting what a scientific theory is, I see. How many times do we have to say that a scientific theory is different from a scientific hypothesis? Hypothesis has to be proven true with loads of evidence in order for them to even become a theory. Once it becomes a theory, it's just a way of explaining a bunch of already true facts. You need a lot of faith to believe in this nonsense that 13.8 billion years ago there was a great nothing. And this nothing, for no reason, no purpose, just spontaneously just boom, explodes. And this explosion, this atomic bomb, you could say, somehow, somehow bombs create stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, no one is claiming there was nothing before the Big Bang. We're saying that there was a condensed singularity of all the elements of the universe concentrated into a small point. We're also not saying that it was an explosion either. The Big Bang was more of an expansion of space and the elements within it. 
This bomb, this explosion goes off, all matter, and then all the intelligent life forms come into existence. I mean, uh, the laws that make my heart govern this body and the cells and the, the brain function and uh, the, the way that the wind works and the, and the way that the sun and the moon and the, the ocean, if we go into the, the uh, animal kingdom, all the different, man, just sit there and watch planet Earth for a moment. Look how intelligent our universe is. So they want you to believe <laughs> that all of this intelligent design that we see in the universe, this obvious intelligence. Well, the universe is far from intelligent. It's full of chaos, actually. And the species that do happen to exist evolve to the point they're at today through a long, slow, and gradual process of evolution. They didn't just come into being at all. And these species evolved to fit the laws of the universe, not the other way around. That all of this intelligent design that we see in the universe, this obvious intelligence, came about for no reason, no intelligence behind it, just spontaneous explosion, boom, bomb goes off 13.8 billion years ago and gives us the entire universe that we have today. I don't think you're realizing how long 13.8 billion years is. That is a long time for change to occur. Give that much time to natural processes, natural selection and mutation, given the right circumstances, species like we have on Earth today could possibly occur. And the universe is actually still expanding. So there's no the Big Bang happened and we have the universe as it is today. The Big Bang, which was just the start of a cosmic expansion, is an ongoing process and will continue to take place long after we die. And the majority of you believe it because your school teachers told you it's fact. The textbooks literally lied to you. They had lies in it. And you blindly believed your teacher. And because society and everyone else believes this, you're like, yeah, 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 that's, that, that's what it is. Well, sadly, I wasn't taught these theories in school. But I'm glad that creationists were finally defeated in the unnecessary fight to get these facts to be taught in schools. Uh, no, no. God gave us a brain so that we could use it. Okay, we were intelligently designed so that we could use our intelligence. Okay, so use it. You're right. Lord Vishnu did give me a brain, which is why I decided to use it to study and accept these theories and not blindly believe in intelligent design because my parents and pastor told me it was true. Um, now, let's look at intelligent design. What does intelligent design teach or the Bible teach? That God, who, you have to understand the nature of God because you're going to say, well, if God created the universe, then who created God? Ha <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Who created God? What a stupid question. And yes, there are stupid questions. That's a dumb one. Well, I wouldn't ask that question. But a lot of the times that that question is asked is in response to creation is saying the universe must have been created. So you say that God is eternal and doesn't need to be created. Well, my response to you is, why can't the universe be eternal, not needing to have been created? So an intelligent God creating the universe makes sense because what we do is then we look at the observable universe and we can look at science. Science, in fact, proves an intelligent designer because everywhere we look in nature, including our own bodies in, like I said, planet Earth, you go out there and you, you look at nature and, and the bugs and how they work and certain insects. It, it's, it's a miracle. God has created intelligent designs everywhere. Well, if species in the universe itself were designed, they were poorly designed. There are about 20 issues with the human body alone, and most of the universe is chaotic and unsustainable for life. Hell, most of planet Earth is inhabitable by most of the species on it. So you say intelligent design, I say bishware. Now, what's so funny too is even the biggest people who push this always fall back with dumb stuff, okay? You have uh, Richard Dawkins, and he goes out and he says, and I, I just heard Bill Nye say the same thing, you know, well, you know, it's not God that created the universe, but it could be aliens. <laughs> Richard Dawkins and Bill Nye were not talking about the design of the universe, but the design of mankind only. Since abiogenesis is not yet proven, nor have our ancestry been linked all the way back to abiogenesis yet, life here on Earth being designed by extraterrestrials is an actual possibility. But the Big Bang and evolution would still be true. Why are these guys who for so long, okay, have said there's no intelligent designer, are now starting to backtrack a little bit and saying, well, you know, we might 
be intelligently designed, but it's not, it's not the God of the Bible. No, it's little green Martian men who come and fly in their spaceships. They created us. You see what they just did? And this is key for you to get. They just disproved their own theory that they've been standing for forever. Why? Because if Martians created us, that means intelligent design is right. That we were intelligently designed by something. You might think it's little green Martians. I think it's an almighty God who has no beginning and no end. The Alpha, the Omega, the Almighty, the Great Father. Oh, he is the one who created it. See, the thing is, they were not talking about universal intelligent design, just special intelligent design. They are two completely different things. You creationists love to take people's words out of context, don't y'all? And if the Big Bang were to have been started by an external being, it was most likely not the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible doesn't even know how his own universe works. Have you read the Bible? So, you see, even the main leaders in this evolution movement have to fumble logically on their own theory and have to say that, well, you know what? It might be that we're intelligently designed by Martians <laughs> because they know science points to intelligent design. No, you have to fumble logically with your comprehension of their ideas because you know that science points to cosmic expansion and evolution. Look at the intelligence here, okay? Look at, look at the way that my brain is sending, okay, specific things to my mouth to speak out. And this is communication. And then there's words. And then even my saliva, there's a, there's a mechanism in my body, this intelligently designed mechanism. Okay, even my skin. Everything is intelligently designed. Open your eyes. Open a textbook. Every single thing you just mentioned can be explained through science. Are you kidding me? An explosion created intelligent life. And then over the span of billions and billions of years, things just started to form. Now, this isn't observable either. So when you have evolution and you have this concept of macro evolution, that one, one species evolved into another kind of species, not observable. All macro evolution is, is micro evolution over a long period of time. What you're talking about is speciation. This is when a species breaks off into multiple evolutionary branches to the point where the species on one branch can't reproduce with the species from another branch. This has been observed through many forms of science, paleontology, archaeology, biology, and chemistry, just to name a few. Now, over millions of years of tiny changes, species are going to eventually look a lot different than they did millions of years ago. For example, birds look totally different from dinosaurs, which were their ancestors from millions of years ago. No, there's the missing links are, are never found, okay? We don't see transitions going from one species to another. What are you talking about? There has been hundreds of discovered transitional fossils. There's over a hundred of transitional fossils for Homo sapiens, aka humans and apes alone. There are many fossils of Homo sapiens that aren't classic primitive apes, but aren't modern humans either. There's really no missing link between us and primitive apes to be found at this point. One thing that does exist is microevolution, the variations between different species, I would say kinds, but nothing like an ape turning into a human. And I'll just say, why? What happened to those other apes? Are they the stupid apes? They, they, they couldn't evolve? Those are the dumb monkeys? <laughs> Come on. So dumb. So dumb. <sighs> The reason why there are still apes that are the way they are today is because, like I mentioned earlier, we broke off into separate evolutionary paths. But the fact of the matter is we actually are apes, anatomically and biologically. You can say we're a different kind of ape, but we're apes nonetheless. Uh, I wanted to just put this out there because the Big Bang evolutionary atheistic philosophy is stupid. Whoa, did you just clump the Big Bang and evolution theory with atheism? All atheism is, is a lack of belief in a god or gods. There can be atheists who don't believe in these theories, and there can be theists who believe in both of these theories. And this combination isn't a philosophy either. It's just not believing in gods while accepting scientific facts. Do you even dictionary? These people are puffed up on their own stupidity. And because we have a school system and a society that you know, is anti-God, because the Bible says that, that this world is anti-God, they hate God, they, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. These guys actually think they're smart when they believe this, when believing this is an insult against your intelligent designer who created you to use your brain and be intelligent. Well, if accepting facts is an insult to Allah, then he's very petty. Shame on you, Allah. 
Shame on you. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Stay vigilant. Fear no evil. You have a blessed and wonderful day too, Mario. And I will stay vigilant of people who try to indoctrinate people into these irrational ways of thinking. And the only thing I fear is people like you holding science back and the evil that holy books like yours condones and teaches. Now again, I'm not knocking religion, but knowledge is great, kids. Have a good one.